There's something about Phil Barassa that's incredibly contagious. He's an amazing artist, he's an amazing designer. He's a genius. He's just been knocking out of the park over and over again. With his designs, it just solidified the characters in our heads on the page. He's that good and he's that confident. I love drawing this stuff. We at Critical Role have been blessed with having uh, our characters drawn by amateur and professional artists in the Critter community for years. I've seen hundreds of versions of Scanlan Shorthalt. There's been such a broad spectrum drawn. But when I found out that Phil Barassa was gonna be our official character designer for The Legend of Vox Machina, it was like a great weight had been taken off my shoulders. I'm a huge fan of Phil Barassa's. I have been for many, many years. All of his work on the, on the DC films, I saw his style and I, I connected with it in such an acute way. He has such a fantastic eye. I met Travis before I knew about Critical Role. He was playing one of the heavies in a Batman movie I did all the character design for. I didn't talk to him after that for a few years. The next time we ran into each other, my wife and I were taking an early flight out of LAX to go to JFK for New York Comic Con in 2018. As the fates would have it, when Laura and I sat down, I hear this, Travis? And I look to my left and across the aisle is Phil Barassa just sitting right there. And just in that moment, lightning bolt to the head, I was like, we got this animated series that we're, we're developing. Travis was like, would you be down to take a pass at these characters? And I was like, hell yeah. Just something clicked for me drawing this stuff. I'm just shy of 20 years now doing this. And I spent the last 11 consecutive years doing superheroes. If I'm known for anything, it's for the work that I did on the DC superheroes at Warner Bros. Animation. But fantasy is my first love. Phil is so amazing and he's worked on a lot of the superhero stuff that Travis and I have done in the past. And uh, his designs are phenomenal. So the fact that he came on board was a huge jump in excitement level for me. I mean, the excitement was hard to contain. So many of us were fans of his work from what he'd done with WB. I'm a huge Batman girl and I love all of that. I knew Phil's work before I knew that it was Phil's work. I've seen his animation before, and his character designs are gorgeous. His design work is immaculate. His creativity is brilliant. When I heard that Phil was going to be on the project, I was like, yes, they've got it. This is great. He's perfect. Phil is pretty much a legend in the animation industry out here, and the idea that he would be coming on to the project with us, I don't think I even believed it at first. My reaction to Phil Brasso was like, no fucking way. <laughs> There was something about the project that spoke to me on a deeper personal level that I was willing to take the chance on working with a completely new creative team. Critical Role presented this opportunity to be at the ground floor of something relatively new and fresh. And even though the lore was clearly well-defined and the characters were well-defined, there was so much to explore on a visual level. Normally when I'm creating a design, it comes from the written word or a comic book or, or even just the writer's script. These characters come from the imagination and the heart and the soul of the voice actors, the cast members who are the creators and founders, right? So they were very involved. We all had, I had a lot of input. I mean, I gave notes on the feathers, I gave notes on the hair, I gave notes about how much she wants to use her feminine wiles, so you know, I didn't want her to be too brazen. So much is determined by the performances, what the creators had imbued in their creations, the way Laura's performance informs the way that I draw the character. She's got to have some sass, she's got to have some attitude, whereas Keyleth has this charming naivete, like an innocent aspect. Every time we pull up an image or a turnaround of Keyleth, everyone in the room is just like, oh, oh, she's so cute. She's just, 
she's just a little button. And I think because Keyleth has this fresh look at the world, we really wanted to reflect that in her character design. Even his first designs and his first stab at Scanlan was kind of perfect. I don't think we changed that much. We were just nitpicking on collar size and hair shape. Everything else, like Phil's first takes, are everybody else's 10th take. The first stuff I saw of Grog, the frame is right, the expressions were right, and he just gets the bearing of the guy because it's so easy to make a hulking figure look intimidating. But Grog has to be able to convey both the rage and the fury of a strong jaw, but also like the warmth and the gentle nature of Grog. He's kind of the Hulk, but he's kind of not. There's a cuteness to Grog too. So there are things that we played with, like the size of his ears. Phil did such a good job with just the nuance of each of the characters' personalities coming through. Pike's hair color to the color of her armor and the little scrapes on her armor, and he just took it to the next level. They've created these original characters, but they're they're also very archetypal. Like. Percy and Vax are dexterity builds, so they're very lithe and long to kind of bring out to show the, the agility and the dexterity inherent in the class. Percival is a character that Phil grasped so quickly and understood how everything was supposed to lie, especially when standing with everybody else, has a very unique look and a unique vibe. Phil's excellent at what he does, and both with Vax and with, it, with all these characters, he has come in, landed pretty close to the target already, and then you know, we're able to sort of shoot ideas back and forth, and then the next week, it's there. It's been really cool working with him to kind of take these characters that don't just live in my brain, but each one of them has a part of me in them, and then have them come back even prettier than I could have ever hoped for. Watching him dive into this fantasy scape, Phil's just flexing. He's having a blast. Phil's had tons of leeway to just create kind of whatever his mind can dream up. Something that's really important about this, this animated series is we wanted it to be definitely and distinctly an adult series. It's for grown-ups. So we wanted to make sure that the world, the background, the atmosphere, and the character designs both sort of read as sophisticated, mature. We definitely want to make sure that this show feels unique. And I think Phil was well aware of that and totally down to just try anything and throw ideas at the wall and see what's stuck. Phil's designs capture the kineticism and, and flow of the best that Japanese animation has to offer while feeling uniquely Western and uniquely, uh, honestly, uniquely themselves. Phil's stuff definitely leans way more in the anime direction. And anime itself is kind of like part of the DNA of Titmouse's look and culture. All of us here watch a shit ton of anime. So he almost was a perfect fit in the sense that he's looking at the same exact kind of stuff and incorporating that into his designs. He just came to this with a vigor and an excitement that we couldn't help but be excited alongside it. There almost couldn't be a better match as far as Western character designers than Phil. We are pouring every ounce of passion and love and creativity that we have at our disposal into trying to bring this world to life. Watching Phil dive into this world, you kind of got the sense of an athlete sort of stretching. He's really just starting to break out of anything that he's done before. It's only limited by what your imagination can envision, and for Phil, there is uh, no shortage of that. I really have not experienced anything this good <laughs> in animation. I'm hoping we can do a lot of seasons of this show. I think we're only really getting started with him. He's blown us out of the water with everything that we have in season one. God's help us for what's in store in season two.